As a doctor, would you tell a new patient that you were diagnosed with cancer at the age of five, or would you consider this overstepping the professional doctor-patient boundary? Similarly, is it acceptable to mention personal or family health matters in a personal statement that is to be read by unknown admissions tutors? This very much divides opinion, but the majority of admissions panellists that we've worked with are not fond of personal health matters being mentioned in a personal statement. We obviously recognise that spending half of your childhood in hospital for regular chemotherapy is a challenge. However, openly mentioning this in a personal statement does little to improve your application. Instead, it is preferred for such circumstantial challenges to be mentioned in your tutor reference. Almost 80% of the personal statements we review have avoidable grammatical errors. These range from using American English spelling to inaccurate punctuation and inappropriate use of capitals or lowercase letters. Whilst asking medical students and doctors to review your personal statement is obviously beneficial, the input of English teachers cannot be underestimated. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that mentioning extracurricular activities is optional. As medical schools, we are looking for well-rounded students who will not only represent us positively academically, but will also contribute to our extracurricular clubs and societies. Differentiating between students who are predicted four A stars is challenging, to say the least, but it's made a lot easier when one applicant mentions that they represented their county at badminton whilst the next only talks about an extra work experience. It's great that you've done six work experience placements and even spent time with the NHS clinical lead for cancer. Unfortunately, mentioning a long list of hospitals and doctors that you've worked with will not secure you a place at medical school. Instead, focus on what you learnt from each experience and how it has further motivated you to study medicine. So you spent every weekend for the last six months working in a pharmacy, and you're even planning on applying to study pharmacy as a fifth choice backup. Despite this, avoid mentioning these non-medicine work experiences which undermine your motivation to study medicine. As an admissions panellist reviewing your personal statement, I would translate this as you're not fully committed to medicine and you lack the self-belief that you will obtain a place at medical school. This leaves me with little confidence in your application and ultimately leads to likely rejection. Needless to say that doing biology and chemistry A-levels will not differentiate you from 90% of applicants. Equally, this information can be easily found by reviewing your predicted grades. With only 4,000 valuable characters available to you, don't waste them on explaining your A-level choices and how these have prepared you to be a doctor.